Hi folks, it is the time you've all been waiting for. You're about to hear our top 10. Now, before we do the top 10, yeah. we do want to get some honorable mentions because these guys weren't around in my top 100. They didn't want to be around in my top 100, but now they want to talk about top, but ones that just missed out or honorable mentions, maybe games they haven't played yet that they think would be in there. Um, I'm going to start with the man with the Marty McFly outfit in the background there. Oh, start with Bernardo. Oh, start, start with, with Bernardo? Bernardo? Yeah. Okay. All right, Bernardo, go okay. for it. All right. So we have, have a few that are bigger. I didn't want to bring them in front because they're huge games. Um, one being uh, the Mystery Mansion electronic board game. Um, the game's huge, um, but I have it. I just haven't gotten to play it. Crash Canyon's another one that's big. I didn't want to hold that could make it. I don't know. Um, this is one that's um, pretty rare called Expedition Alpha. This uses um, kind of like the uh, 3D glass I glasses idea to like show um, different kind of paths on the board. This is a really cool game. I've yet to get it to the table yet. Um, we also I remember have you telling me about that one. Of what happened? I remember you telling me about that one with the glasses. You got it from Germany. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Only from Germany that game is. Uh, Dash and Dine is one I haven't got to the ta table yet. Um, Matt's been bugging me. He wants me to get it to the table. We got Definitely. Vanilla Ice Rap Game, which you'll laugh, but this might honestly make my top 50 at some point. Cause... And finally, <laughs> uh, we actually have Ice Cube. Uh, Ice Cube is another honorable mention. I actually own it here, but uh, I actually don't own Ice Cube. I own the reprint, which is actually trouble. Looks like Disney did an Ice Cube kind of board game here with a nice 3D oh. board. You got salt. You can make them look like Olaf. Let's see Matt's face. Can you show me everyone? Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, is this a game? Where you're trying to melt Olaf? Yeah. Yeah, it looks that way. Are they made from ice cubes? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> I want to see your face, Matt. Change okay. the camera angle. <laughs> I never knew that existed. Disney didn't miss an opportunity, and they did it. And the board is a lot cleaner. Uh, I'm, I believe it's the same size. However, I'm not sure if the original did this, but these are actually silicone. They fix the <clears throat> problem here Silicone i'm gonna buy spray, that game which you got two pieces of ola oh yeah and it's trouble because the only thing that's trouble with it is the pop-up dice which is awesome everything's all self consistent and so you're moving around the board this trying to melt ola yeah there's they fixed mm. the the weight one they didn't do in this one not not a fan of the weight anyway um they did quite a few other different things i'll have you look into it um they do the salt shaker which is a nice kind of you know they had to do their branding so it has the salt but the reason why you couldn't find it was because it's a trouble game not a ice cube game but it's the same game yeah and it's well all v you know, they finally Matt did said it. i'm too poor to have the original wow wow i'm definitely getting i'm definitely getting that game that game is sold, man. That's amazing. I never knew. I never knew they'd redid they'd redone it. <clears throat> wow. Okay. So Luke, what are your honorable mentions? Okay. Um, honorable mentions. So um, there is UFO alarm, which it plays an awful lot like a vintage game. Like the mechanism is really unique. You've got like a, it's actually a, a miniature vacuum cleaner which sucks up these foam um barnyard pieces and i picked it up thinking this is a vintage game but sadly it isn't it doesn't fit my criteria as a vintage game it's it's not 15 years old so that's completely out the other t the other the other ones i've got here as well um i have horror house um which i know is really high up on a lot of people's list because of the presentation the mechanics and i've been after this for so long i've had it about a week and i've not had chance to play it yet uh part of the time what i've had this game has been getting the death head to to work again because it's a miniature record player in there uh the belt had come off the motor and it needed some wiring work but i've got it all working and i'm itching to get it to the table it's just i've not had chance to yet and i think 
I probably want to play it a few times to get a real handle on it and get, get a proper feel for it. Uh, similar to that as well is another rare game that I've not had a chance to play yet, which is the Euro Disney board game. Uh, this is from 1992. Uh, there was only one place in the world that you could get the game, and that was Euro Disney. So it's really hard to get hold of. And, uh, yeah, I've got a complete copy. Dying to play this because I'm a huge Disney fan, um, but I've had this for four days, just not brought it to the table yet. So it's not fair to bring this. Um, I did want to say Fireball Island, the restoration game, but again, I feel like that game is. I know it's a re rebranding and a reimagining of Fireball Island, the classic 1986 game, but to me, it feels like its own thing. It's not vintage uh it, they've definitely it's got the same name but it's definitely its own thing um it's a remake of ice cube uh called uh, cool runnings what and this is mind melts you died <laughs> with it on purpose <laughs> <Let's see that laughs> yes <laughs> What is that? So, yeah, Cool Runnings. Cool Runnings is a ice cube game. You have oh. um, a modular board, so you have tiles, oh. and you get to make your own track for your ice cube. So you've got certain squares where you are safe. If you're on an ice cube, uh, you are safe. You are safe from attacks. If you land on one of these lava ones, you get attacked, but the attacks come in different ways. So I'll just show you. So these here are your ice cube trays, um, individual ones, silicone again, they're quite squishy. And once you've made your ice cube, you place it in the top of this with that underneath. So as it melts, it drips into this bottom here and keeps the boards nice and clean. But the board Boards are plastic anyway, so that's great. But this game is evil. This game is a really nasty game to play. So the way you attack each other, you have a deck of cards. These cards here. And each card has a... Let me just get a good one out. There we go. So each card has a number value on it, and it also has an attack. The number value is how far you can move your ice cube along. Um, so there's like plus one there, plus two, um, plus three. Um, but at the start of your turn, you get to choose whether you want to move your ice cube along or whether you want to attack another player. Uh, and the way this works is you play your attack. So you can play that one. And that's the attack there. The attack is you have to hold the ice cube in your hand for 10 seconds. But if someone else has, so you play that card, and you go, if you're playing with other people, you go, right, I'm playing this card on you. But that player could have the same attack as you and go, uh, 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 no, I'm re rebounding that attack right back on you. And then you can flip this all around. So you con you're constantly uh, changing and charging attacks at people, but they might deflect it. And they might even deflect it onto someone else who's not even involved in that battle. So it could be like, Matt, I'm I'm going to have you pour salt on yours. And Matt go might go, ah, but I've got a salt card, but I'm not going to deflect it onto you. I'm going to deflect it onto Bernardo. And Bernardo's going, whoa, what have I done to be involved in this? It's so much fun. There's two different ways of winning. You can either get over the finish line first or you can uh, melt your opponents. Whenever we've played it, it's always going for the melt. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, this game. Matt, I've got to be honest. Me and Bernardo have had both of those games since March. What? Yeah. <laughs> we've been playing the oh. real video Um reviews of them but our timing our schedules just things that have been going on so when we realized this would be a good opportunity hey. that's awesome that's awesome can i see that game again luke what was the name of that one this one is I'm called looking at that one too this one's called cool runnings cool By running burger Ravensburger game. Oh, well, then that one's the one I got to get. <laughs> <laughs> no, no that, that, my, one's, that one's a better version. Mine's is literally a reprint of Ice Cube. That's like a better implementation for sure. It just really doesn't have characters. It's just cubes. 
the crummy thing about it is like the box is just ridiculously big like you've got this insert there and there's nothing inside it it's just empty space i don't know why they made it as big as this it's a little like a key yeah. Maybe. That's pretty much it. And the other thing I would recommend as well, if you do get this game, sleeve the cards because they'll get wet. Oh, that's good. That's a good point there. That's fair. Yeah. Is, um, is, that just, is that just a UK game? I had to get this from Germany, but the instruction, <clears throat> manual, does the, the instruction manual does have overseas. instructions. So uh, yeah, um, cool runnings. Yeah. Just think of uh, John Candy and bobsleds, and you'll remember the name. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. That one looks awesome. <laughs> All right. A review on that <laughs> top <ten. laughs> That's awesome. I'd love to see those games. All right. So now that they got their surprise on me, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, let's get to our top ten. Crash Canyon was on my list, by the way. I had it right here for a minute. I looked it up for a minute there. It was near near somewhere around the bottom, but it's still a good game. I do enjoy it as a race car game goes. I can't find it now on my list. But, oh, there it is, 83. It was 83 on my list. But it's still a good game. Still a good game. One of those 3D Milton Bradley big box games. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Bernardo, what is number 10? Number After 10. all the hubbub. <laughs> is voice of the mummy we got a record player game here uh this one um honestly i can see this game going higher on the list if i get more and more plays the more i play this game the more i appreciate and enjoy it it's not just a game that's rare and expensive with a record player i promise you first it has the theme i love more than anything explore you're exploring a tomb to collect jewels and this record player is absolutely evil it dictates a lot of movement whenever you land on the uh, sarcophagus face spaces and it can do things like um, what your goal is to bring the um, kind of the golden uh, the great jewel to your exit point but once you get uh, the great jewel you automatically get the spell which you need to not have the spell in order to win the game you can't win if you have the spell and you flip the disc uh, the record over for the second part of the game because once you obtain um these the the record changes in the second half of the game and it's evil it can say things like um give the spell to someone or you obtain the great spell and it like it has ways to ruin it get take three jewels anywhere from the board it is such a fun a ruthless game and it's so creepy the theme on it is so much there i absolutely love this game i highly recommend it I got this restored um, by my buddy Richard, who's on YouTube. You'll see him. He shows that he sells refurbished versions of these, which um, from what I've seen, and especially with this one, mint condition copies, um, which is great. I, I specifically appreciate when the box is clean, too. And with his um, fixes on it, can't go wrong on it. Absolutely love this game. Uh, it's very pricey, so it's hard to recommend it. But if you want to get a, a game that's uh, more of like an artifact and the game in itself that's the one to get for sure yeah i had a feeling when i saw seance last time that this was going to be up there that is that looks like an incredible game i think uh i saw i first saw that on the uh, norm board game museum and i was just in uh, i never knew about the little record before so really impressive yeah. i didn't know when i saw his video i was like I need to get this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Luke, what is number 10? Number 10 is the first board game review I ever did for this channel. And there's a really good reason. It's absolutely awesome. And that is Crossbows and Catapults Master Battle Set. Uh, this thing is ratty as hell. The box is battered, and that's all because I have played this so many times. Now, I've had other um, tabletop warfare games in my list so far, and uh, the reason why I put Crossbows and Catapults ahead of Siege and the 
uh, Weapons and Warriors Parrot Battle Set is because this game allows you to build your castle how you want it. You are given these brick pieces which allow you to build your formations exactly how you want them to be. And I've played this for 25 years and I figured out the perfect way to do this. Um, so the whole game is like you've got uh, a, a castle, you've got eight men, one leader, and uh, you are basically trying to kill each other. Um, nice, wholesome kids game. Um, but the great thing with this is that there's um, magic cards as well that you can use to, at any time. Uh, you get two uses of the magic cards, and uh, you kind of guess which hand. So the, it all boils down to what hand is the um, projectile in. And if you guess right, you get a really great benefit. If you guess wrong, it can be disastrous for you. The other thing as well is that you've got special projectiles. So you've got um, a rock projectile. You've got one with fire. Uh, if, if the fire one lands anywhere near a crossbow or a catapult, it's gone. It's out of the game. You are one weapon less in the game. If you can get both the crossbow and the catapult out, the only one they're left with is the tower. You can't destroy that, but... And it's evil. It's, it's evil. This game, though, is... It, it is the best of these tabletop warfare games. And copies of this are disgracefully expensive now. Like, I got this brand new, and I remember buying it from Toys R Us for £30, my birthday money. And this thing now goes well over 100 Um But, yeah, I would never get rid of this game. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yours is actually double the price too. So I'm actually working to get those projectiles wow. cuz they have abilities like mine. It's like 250 bucks, which is why I recommend checking out Catapult Kingdom. It's a Kickstarter that just recently completed. It, it's basically that exact game. Obviously it's not going to have the vintage feel, but if you want it and you don't want the heavy price to pay, take a look at Catapult Kingdom. Highly recommend it. I did at look that. at that and they have literally nerfed it. So the projectiles, they're not hard plastic. They're sponge balls, aren't they? <laughs> no, no. I, I believe they're like, um, there are, it's it's like a sponge material. It's almost like, kind of like a racquetball kind of material. I believe I, I, it, that's what it looks like. I thought it was kind of like, you know, the um, the boulder from the um, Fireball Island, Island expansion. I was thinking kinda it was like kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like it might be a little heavier, but I can't judge off of that. But well, yeah, yeah. definitely it's a little less dangerous. If you can't put it's things out, it, it, if you can't, <laughs> it's not a choking hazard, Luke is not interested. No, yeah, it's kind of then get you like an element warriors. of danger. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a sense of danger when you're playing catapults know, and crossbows. You can't yawn in the game. We want to know that there's a penalty <laughs> for yawning. <laughs> it's not a game for the rest restless. That's right. <laughs> Okay, well, folks, my number 10 pales in comparison to both of theirs. They're, they're talking about $250 games, okay? I'm showing you a, a, ten, a number 10 game that you can get for about 10 bucks online. It's not very, it's very cheap. It's the only, now it's the only 3M game I have left in my collection, but I absolutely love it. It's bounced around my top 10 before it's fallen out. It's back in at number 10 because it is an election year, Mr. President is just phenomenal. First off, I love these 3M games. They look like bookshelves games. Mm -hmm. they, they're on your bookshelf. You can just pull them on out. Look, these were supposed to be respectable games for adults, not just kid games, adult games. But some of them were really smart. And this one, this whole box, they use the box as a ballot box. And basically, you're writing down, you're grabbing these cards, and you're putting them in a certain section within the U.S., and that's where your votes are going to. Now, they, now, each card has one state for each one of these regions, so the other player doesn't know which, you know, they know which region you put the vote in, but they don't know what state you put it in. Very great game. Um, you're, of course, you're trying to count the electoral votes at the end, and that's where everyone loves the game. It can play four players. Basically, that's just two teams of two, one being president, one being vice president. But this game is so amazing. I talked about Campaign Trail earlier. Mr. President just sings better. It just feels better because it's got better rules and it's so much fun my wife and i played and uh she won california and i won the whole west i didn't put up single you th every time someone puts a vote in the west you think they're voting for california because it's worth a lot of electoral votes but i didn't get that one at all i got every other state and there's it just made me realize sometimes you forget which state you need to be focusing on which states i guess and uh like i said the game has a lot of great gameplay there are different rules 
depending on which edition you get, there's a 66, 67, 68 or whatever rule. My rule book says something different than Norm's, who looks exactly the same, which I had to double check my rules after his review. But there are two different sets of rules there for certain games. But anyway, the game is wonderful. It's just deceptively fun. That that does not look fun at all. That looks boring to me. That looks 60s bo boring. Mm -hmm. But this game is phenomenal and it's not expensive at all. Seriously, it's like 10 bucks used. So there you go. You get a cheap one. Mr. President, number 10. It's part of that game, like, interrupting the other player whilst they're trying to answer questions. It, it, it is, and it, it, that's, that's the other one. And plus the other one just going, we're going we're gonna to give the people tax increase, tax cuts increases. <laughs> you got to keep Can we mumbling. bribe them? Can I bribe people in that game? Two. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's <laughs> It's 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 just as much fun as watching a presidential debate. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, so yeah. that's a good line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, Luke. What is number nine? Is it me? I thought it was Bernardo. Oh, I'm sorry. It is Bernardo. You're right. You're right. You're right. Bernardo, number nine. Number nine. Ready, set, spaghetti. Yeah. What? So I. So actually. Uh, Luke reviewed this first. When I saw his review, I was like, man, because I had this game for about two months before his review um, came out. And I was like, man, I'm glad I didn't review it first because I liked his rule um, that he added to remove pieces um, when you end up rolling. Or, yeah, you remove the pieces if you roll something that's not there, I believe it was. It's been a little bit. I'd have to open it up. I read it, wrote it onto the rules, uh, into the box itself. Um, but uh, the game is awesome. Uh, I was completely surprised by this game. I had no idea it would be as fun as it was. Um, the yarn mechanism that you're basically um, rolling a die and you're adding ingredients, but you're trying to set your opponent's um, kind of string piece, which replicates the noodle, um, and lock it in place. So, so when, um, or no, all the pieces are on the board and you're rolling to remove them. Um, so while you're twisting your fork, um, you're trying to get all of your pasta in first. So you have to remove the ones that'll help you, but you may also help your opponent. Um, so I guess the rule was when you roll something um, that's um, no longer on the board, you get to place it back onto the board to kind of screw your opponent over. Uh, but this game is awesome. Uh, every time I play it, I play it at least five times back to back. It's a fast, fun, um, fast paced game. Uh, it's not that expensive either. I got mine for, I believe, $20 um, shipped. Um, so really good game. It is a great game. It got ranked lower on my my top 100 only because I don't have a complete set. I'm still missing a few pieces, but it's weird that my I, I can't buy replacement pieces because I don't know. Some of them are smaller pegs. That's the one I need. Some of them are larger pegs. Whenever I try to explain someone what type of peg it is, they they can't tell me, and it's so tiny the difference. Um, I I don't want to buy you know extra pieces and them not fit on my board. So I don't know if I have a UK board with American pieces and American board with UK pieces or something like that. But I mean, it's not so bad, but I am missing a few, but I love that game. Love that game. Absolutely adore it. Yeah. All right. Now, Luke, what is number nine? Number nine is, oh, come on. There we go. Forbidden Whoa. Grape. Um, this is peak Milton Bradley in terms of presentation um uh, like a 90s game the artwork on the box is just it's it's like old movie posters but the actual gameplay itself is just a lot of fun so there's a, a plastic uh, so there's a ton of plastic to this as well uh the idea of the game is to make it up the river up the cliff across the bridge and retrieve two jewels from the idol um but uh, there's another dice you roll as well over the movement. There's uh, moving the other players along the planks so, or uh, stealing jewels and hitting the idol. When you hit the idol, the whole bridge rocks and shakes. And, um, yeah, uh, you can have other players falling off the bridge. But the bridge itself uh, has loads of little hooks uh, and the play piece of the design. So you can lock your player into a plank and be safe. But 
the edges of the planks might have like a little hook so you can sort of dangle over the edge by your boots. Uh, it's really clever. Um, I, like Bernardo mentioned, I, I've, I always play this without the railings in place because you kind of want to make it more dangerous with the hooks and everything. Not every plank has a hook. Um, so like this plank here doesn't have any hooks. If the bridge starts rocking, you're going to go sliding straight off back down there. You'll have to start your journey all over again. It's such a fun game. Like I've got friends who are huge Indiana Jones fans, and this is one that they want to, you know, request to play quite a lot. It's, it's dumb fun. I mean, it's it's really expensive to find complete, but it's it's kind of worth the price if you ask me. Um, yeah, Forbidden Bridge. What a game! Yeah, I agree. It's it's hard to find. It's hard to find. I rank that one the lowest out of us three, but I need to re But you know what? I've never taken away the uh, the uh, the, uh, fence, the what are they, they call the little uh, the railings. Rails. Rails. I need to take away the rails. Take away the rails for that. I agree. It's a fun game. I it like. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. It does. All right. Well, my number nine again isn't as big and epic as all these other ones, but it has been mentioned before. Uh, Bernardo, you mentioned it earlier. For me, this is a top 10 game, though. It is. This game is a masterpiece. It is. It really yeah. is. It's great. I love the art. I love the little easel. That's what convinced me to get the 90s version. But um, I love the 90s version. I think it is great. It's fun when someone's trying to – they think they're stealing a painting from you for cheap, but then they find it was a forgery the whole time. There's no better feeling because now they're in on the secret, and they can't – they can't give it away because they want someone else to steal it from them. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots, lots, lots of gameplay in here, and it is incredibly fun, deceptively fun, to be honest. A game about artwork. And it's educational, too, because all the artwork is actual pieces of art. They give you a description of what each art was, the painter, the year it came out, and everything. But this is just a phenomenal game. It's it's cheap to get to. I think even the 90s version is cheaper than the 80s version to get, but Either way, it's unbelievable, well worth your time. I can't say anything more that Bernardo already said on it, but I absolutely love Masterpiece. It's a great game. Yeah. All right, so Bernardo, what is number eight? Number eight, a game I had waited about almost a year to get, even before I was collecting games. Horror House. I just took the lid because I don't want it to rattle everywhere. This game <laughs> is awesome. It is a horror-based game with a record player in the middle. And your goal is you have these, I believe they're priest pieces. You actually kind of mentioned it. I didn't even look at them. They have like a cross on them. We won't get into that. Um, but basically, you're going through this dungeon um, to try to escape. But while you're doing that, you run into a bunch of different traps and you're trying to defeat these monsters. They are these Japanese horror monsters. Some of them are more popular, like Dracula. Um, I won't say too many of them because I'll be talking more about them um, later on my channel um, with all of the cards because there's a lot of different monsters. Um, but e how you attack them is you take the little crucifix and you put it into the skull's mouth. That'll determine whether you kill it, if it's a scream, if it's a laugh, they end up getting you, or if it's kind of like some dropping of swords, that means you swap it out for a different monster and you got to now attack that one. This game is a blast. It does last a little bit long depending on how lucky or unlucky you get, um, but I never find that to be a problem. It is a game that can take a little bit of time. I'd say it probably play about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So be wary of that. Understand that. Um, but for a game, it's probably one of the rarest games I have, and it is awesome, and it's high on my list for that very reason. I love horror movies in this game. If there's any horror game I recommend, th this is going to be the top of the top. I am itching to play my copy. I'm excited <laughs> to hear your thoughts. <laughs> All right. All right, Luke, what is your number eight? My number eight is a game that I think one of you mentioned earlier on in your list. Um, but it's one that I picked up not too long ago, but we've played it a surprising amount. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, Bermuda Triangle. Oh. Yeah, um, this was a real surprise. I got this really cheap, and it, the, the, it's in phenomenal condition for its age. I think it's 1974, this. Um, yeah, the game is fantastic. So, um, 
Component wise, it looks a little on the cheap side, but you've you've just got to get past it. Although I've got to I've got to show this. It's the only game I've ever had arrive, and it comes with a free piece of wall art. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. even think of it like that. That's funny. Um, yeah, you have. Um, oh, let me just pop this back in the box. Yeah, you have um, this. Um, uh, storm uh, which moves around the board so the aim of the game is to you have four ships and each ship starts in each corner of the board a different port and you are trying to move around the board and secure uh, trades of two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars before anybody else the first person to get two hundred and fifty thousand or more is the winner however at the end of each round of turns the storm moves uh, the way you do that is you spin this spinner here, and it dictates which direction. So the, the the storm rotates on this center peg, and uh, it it rotates. So it'll tell you which uh, position it needs to be at, and it'll tell you how many squares are north, south, east, or west it needs to move. And um, the underside of the storm has magnets, and the top of each boat also has magnets. And if you get caught in the storm that boat's lost. You may have lost uh, like a huge shipment that you're banking on doing last, and certain routes are more dangerous than others. So uh, like this route here sort of snakes right into the middle of the board and you really put yourself at risk, but for a higher reward. Uh, the other cool thing as well is boats that get trapped underneath the storm, they can actually push around other boats. So you might not get trapped by the storm, but you might get pushed way off course from where you want to be. And then you ha once the storm's moved away from on top of you, you have to move to the nearest white space. And yeah, that also can be a real pain, but this game is surprisingly good fun. And that, that storm mechanic, it is tense when it's moving really close to you. So, and the other thing too with this game is, so the ports generally are like the safe areas of this game. You would think, but if a, if the storm moves like into this far corner, it can spin around and just wipe out a full harbor of you know it, it is, and you're devastated because you think, oh man, I thought it was safe there. No, not even close. Uh, there is not a safe spot on this game. Um, it is really worth picking up, and, and it's one which is dirt cheap to pick up. Bermuda Triangle is a brilliant game. Yeah. I had it sitting. I remember when you told me you got it. You're like, "Have you played this?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's sitting at the bottom of my collection. I haven't got to it yet." And then you were pumping it up, and I'm glad you did because it is a great game. I've got to get that game. I've got to you get really that. do, Matt. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, mm. my number eight. Finally, I'm going to step my game up and name a big one. Uh, this is not only a big game per se, but also my favorite electronic game out there. It is Omega Virus. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, where the instructions are a comic book. It is fantastic. You're moving around as a team, but you're also trying to, you're also screwing each other to get uh, items because you want to be the one to be able to stop the Omega Virus from taking over the space station. This is a timed game. You can play on easy, small, and hard. And I'll be honest, we play on hard, and it's a close call every time. It is not an easy game on hard. I think uh, both times we play this year, uh, most of the station had been shut down. There's only one piece left. And um, I, it so happened that was the only place where my Omega virus was. Everyone's Omega virus is in a different location. So it's not all, you, the, uh, the Omega virus isn't just in one location. What And it gives you codes to let you know that. So what one code may mean nothing to you, it means it's the end game for that other person. You got to take notes. You got to pay attention during other players' turns. I love games that penalize you for not paying attention. This game will penalize you. There are traps in certain rooms. And if you weren't paying attention, you will go back to that same room or go to that other room that someone just got a trap in and your droid will blow up. There's droids in this. The pieces look amazing. It's very vibrant, very colorful. This is an unbelievable game. I absolutely love this game. If I was a kid and I'd have had this game, this would have been the only game I would have played as a kid. Uh, like I said, as electronic games go, that is the creme a la creme for me is a mega virus. Absolutely wonderful game, which which I do see on other people's top one. Someone made a top 100. This girl made a top 100 of new games, you know, just new games. But that was on her top 10 of old games. 
she had that near the bottom of the. T- I was like, wow. So it really means a lot to some people when they, if they've ever played it. It's a very fun game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ain't awesome. All right. So Bernardo, what is number seven? Number seven is one Luke already talked about, Up the Ladder. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. So uh, I actually was told uh, this uh, because of Luke, but of course he's a little bird whispering in my ear saying, Bernardo, look at this one. When I first saw it, I was like, this is stupid. This didn't look good. And then I was like, you know what, let, let me look, see if I maybe see a commercial. It, it, I guess it has kind of a cool component. And I looked at it, and I found a commercial, and it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Like, they, when you get up here and too many, uh, it's almost always three on here, it tumbles. And watching everyone come down is the funniest thing. Watching the face of disappointment of all your friends when they're right about to win and you said no. Um, one of the things I got rid of after playing this game a number of times is the color die. And I just allow people to choose which one they want to move and you move whatever one you want. That way you can set people up to fall down the ladder more, which is even funnier, and it allows you to kind of uh, step your game up to getting to the end a lot quicker so you can play more games of this. This game's a lot of fun. Highly recommend it. There's a bunch of different names, so if you go on BoardGameGeek.com and you look up up the ladder, look at the images, there's a bunch in different languages. doesn't matter what language, it plays the same. Um, So highly recommend looking into it. Up the ladder, number seven. I'll have to give a, that a go without using the die. It's fun. Um, and it, there's the one, and there's the black, isn't it, where you get to choose which one you want to move? Yeah, I think it's black and Yeah, um, and we found, like, once we've got those uh, coloured ones up to the top, and you roll it, and you can't, it's not that one. It's basically miss a turn. And I was like, oh, man, this is getting annoying now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right, Luke, what is number seven? Number seven is a game, I think, Matt, you mentioned it earlier on in your list. But, yeah, this game is superb. Lost Valley of the Dinosaurs. Um, I'm a big fan of this game. Um, So, first of all, the presentation of this thing, I absolutely love the the theming of this. It's like uh, those sort of 1950s, dinosaur adventure films like land of the lost and journey to the center of the earth it's that sort of cheesy you know uh, ray harryhausen style dinosaurs um the aim of the game is to make it across the uh, lost valley of the dinosaurs to the temple and retrieve gold coins and uh, i think it's three gold coins you need to get and make it safely back but there's dinosaurs in there and um yeah those are going to get you and eat you um there's also this volcano at the side, which uh, so, so the way it works is you have action cards and you draw an action card and uh, do the action before you actually move your characters. Uh, and the action cards can be moving dinosaurs. It can be being sent to the swamp where the swamp monsters, they're going to get you adding lava to make this lava flow out and onto the board, which acts as like an obstacle to navigate yeah. around. Um, yeah, there's a lot to like about this game. There's a pterodactyle, which kind of acts like a god move. You can use it to retrieve your um, figures out of the swamp. You can use it to... So you you might have a, an opponent who's got a gold coin and is just close to getting out of the valley with it. No, let's pick them up and move them right across the board again, way away from their coin. Um, there's a lot of ways to be a complete dick in this game, and I love games where you can do that. I love <laughs> screwing over the opponent's. I love r- ruining other people's plans in a game. Uh, it's one of the things I thrive at doing. Um, and this game allows you to do that so often and so frequently. Um, components are fantastic. Like the dinosaurs are like these little rubber uh, dinosaur pieces. Like the, the sort of like plastic dinosaur toys that you get like in a bag of like, you know, dinosaur toys for like a book or something like that. Like really cheap, nasty plastic toys but they have some charm to them um yeah um i really like this one it, there's a lot of strategy there's a lot of thinking there's a lot of uh planning ahead um and obviously there's luck as well with what card you draw um but phenomenal game really is a fantastic game wine masterpiece there i i also like how the uh, swamp monster i thought well who would ever get caught by him but you have so many things moving around, you will you will 
Oh, yeah, it's easy to forget. Yeah, it's easy to forget how fast he can catch up with you. So there's a lot of moving pieces there, but I do love them all. I agree with you on that. Okay, well, we're we're stepping on each other's former picks here, I, and I, I realized we would do that. Mine is something that Bernardo had already brought up, um, and I was shocked to see this in my top 10, by the way. When I was doing my top 10, I kept looking at that game going, I think that's a top 10 game because it was ranked pretty uh, in the mid-30s last year. <clears throat> but welcome to the top 10, Star Wars Epic Duels. Star Wars yeah. Epic Duels is good for all wow. the reasons that Bernardo said. It's really awesome. Mm -hmm. I love the painted minis. I hate how this game is 80 bucks or something like that. But it is a really fun game. We've been playing it a lot lately. Uh, my wife played it with me. My wife has never, ever lost this game. She is just really good at getting the right combos and uh, has beat me every time. So uh, this is, of course, one of her favorites, too. But I really do love the game. I just think it's awesome. You can have all of your favorite uh, prequel uh, stars fight the original stars of the movie and vice versa and stuff, you know. So, you know, Darth Vader and, you know, can fight Anakin Skywalker. You know, if you want that match, it's available. Um, I have not played Unmatched by um, uh, Restoration Games. But I, I, that's probably because I have Epic Duels, and I'm happy uh, with Epic Duels, even though I like the idea for Unmatched. I like how they reprinted it. So Buffy Epic Duels came out is too. awesome. Say what? Yeah, Buffy, Buffy just came out, too. So Buffy oh, yeah. No, that, that's really, no, that's really cool. But, I mean, I love my Epic Duels. I love my Epic Duels. This was the, oh, this was the big Episode 2 game that came out that went flew under the radar, and now more people are appreciating it years later. It's a really good one. You so, get the all right, Transformers so, one. Yeah, I need to get the Transformers one. Yeah, Armada. Yeah. All right, so uh, Bernardo, what is number six now? I've been waiting for this one. So I, I contemplated what position this game would be in. The, the best Play-Doh game still to date. And I've <laughs> played a lot. And now that I've gotten more over time, a lot of them have been catching up, just haven't gotten them to the table enough to get them on this list yet. But you guessed it. Chicken Run, Chicken Pot Pie game. And no, you don't need to like the movie to like this game. I don't remember really caring for the movie, but I do like the animation because it's a lot, hard to, a lot hard to do that stop motion stuff. And animation that looks like that. It, it just it looks great. Um, but this game is... Max amount of fun. It does say only plays uh, up to four players. I actually played this with, I believe, eight players where each person shares a chicken because each um, each team gets two chickens and you're trying to get your chicken to uh, chicken paradise. And uh, much like the others, when you smush them, you leave them there. So you start to skip those spaces. Um, you have uh, different pieces on the die that allow you to have covers to protect your chicken, much like in the movie. Um, and you also have um, Mrs. Tweety, um, which who can smush your piece down, which the funniest um, way to smush, I know you like the foot in God's butt, turns into a chicken pot pie. I that love that. Hilarious. But the best component in this game, and the reason why everybody laughs at this game, you have a cannon that launches Play-Doh chickens. That is the funniest thing ever. And you think, oh, if I have it at this angle, all I got to do is shoot it towards um, the flying device and I'll win wrong because uh, play-doh has like an elasticity pl um property to where it will bounce so you it's so hard to get it to happen when it happens everyone's excited and upset for you this is a hilarious game everything just about it, it, it it's fun the chickens look great they look sassy they look funny just uh smushing them is overly satisfying i can't say enough about this game if you're gonna own any play-doh game this should be the only one that you care about it's the best one that sounds so much fun. It it's does so much sound fun. like a lot of fun. I it's like, it's I, kind of ironic as well. Like you know, yeah. like the film is made with plasticine, and you're using Play-Doh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember when I was telling uh, uh, Bernardo, I was buying the Godzilla one. He went, "Dude, you should get the Chicken Run game. It's much better." <laughs> I was like, yeah. "I know, but I just love Godzilla." But you were a big fan. I knew Chicken Run was going to be up there for you. All right, Luke, what is number six? Matt, you've mentioned this game before, but it's just awesome. It is just so, so awesome. And it's a beast of a game as well. It's more madness. <laughs> yeah, this is the 80s version, and uh, this is also the English version with an English voice. But 
if you can get past the girly graphics of this, this game is, oh, it's just so good. Like, first off, presentation is just amazing. Like, the mall itself looks so good on the table. Like, and all the shops are all different. Mm -hmm. But the aim of the game is to um, get six items and make it back to your car pack before anybody else. But, but uh, you have to use uh, cash. Uh, it sounds really weird how, how this game works, but you have cash that you buy the items with, and when you run out of cash, you go to the bank and use your credit card to draw money out. Now, why wouldn't you just use your card at the stores? It was the 80s, you know. Uh, it, it, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there were no debit cards then. Um, but the great thing is it talks. It, the other thing as well is like, so um, the shops, you have uh, three different prices in every shop. So there's a normal price, there's a sale price, and there's also a clearance price. And uh, the, the speaker will announce which shops have a sale on and which one have a clearance on. And it will also periodically change which shops have clearance and which ones have sale. So you might you it's kind of worth your while racing to those ones to get a bargain. But there is a real strategy to this because certain shops will have items which are far cheaper than others. So going to the bookshop and buying a book for uh, 10 pounds is far cheaper than going to say like the uh, men's suit shop and buying a suit for 150 pounds so knowing which shops uh to to go to and visit and when is part of the a lot of fun of um i have my friend simon to thank uh to for getting me this game he found it in a charity shop for i think six pounds and he bought it for me oh. um i freaking love this game um I really, really love it. Um, yeah, um, there's, there's just so much to enjoy about it. Um, yeah, it, it, the girliest thing about it is the box. If you can get past that, there is an excellent game in here. I, I like how your edition has figures. Mine has cardboard stand-ups, which I'm not a fan of. Oh. But that one has plastic figures, yeah. which I really enjoy. The figures are exactly the same figures for the female components for uh, Electronic Mystery Mansion. The same ones. Oh, really? Yeah, it's weird. Wow. That is weird. Never knew that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, folks, my number six is a game I've had in my collection for a while. It is a very cheap game. You can still get it for cheap today, and I don't know why. But I'm glad it's still cheap because whenever I tell someone about Battle Ball, they're not going to have to spend a pretty penny to get it. It's got full painted minis. It's got a metallic ball. It's an American football game where you're one of two teams fighting for the, fu the future of football here. And uh, you're just trying to get a touchdown. And they have these great dice in it. Uh, the faster you run, the higher dice you get. But when you go against another player, you want to have the lowest die, meaning a six-sided die, because whoever rolls, you have a roll-off. Whoever rolls the lowest tackles the other opponent and takes him out for the half. And if he rolls a one, then he takes him out permanently from the game. The game has two halves in it. And it is just amazing. There's also a football die in here. Um, let me see if I can find it. With all my bag. I mean, look at these bag of minis. I mean, those, wow. those are pre-painted minis. They look incredible. They come with it. You can get this game for like five bucks, ten bucks. Um, just really cheap. And I have the dice already in here, but I don't know. I should have pulled it out earlier. But is it a dexterity game like uh, Pro Action Football? I'm sorry? Is it a dexterity game? No, it's not a dexterity game. You are moving the little miniatures across right. the board, but are but it's just so much fun, especially because, yeah, I want the fast guy, but if you get in the vicinity of anyone else, you must stop and do a battle. And if they have a, they may not be as fast as you, but if they have a lower die, you know, like a 10 sided die against your 20 sided die, odds are they're probably going to tackle you. I love the balance of that mm -hmm. game. Um, the game does come with an advanced version, meaning each team has their own special power, but we found that one special power is more powerful than the other one. So we don't play it that way, but you don't have to. This game is uber fun uber fun i see it all the time for super cheap and i cannot recommend it enough uh, just with all the minis you get and it's a metallic die cast you know uh, uh football 
that you're pu pushing around too. I mean, it's it, it's made with heavy components. This game's worth twenty bucks, you know, easily retail. But uh, you can get it for super cheap because I guess no one really likes the game. I think the game is just un phenomenal, and and it is a two player game. I don't get to play it as much, but when I bring it to the table, and we start playing. Everyone has fun, and people who come later. I usually play it for the first person who comes. I know someone's going to be late, so we'll bring that out. And if I the people who come late will watch the rest of the game, cheering it on, cheering on whoever's going to win because it's just such a fun game to watch too because the minis look amazing. So Battle Ball, my number six. I got to get it. I see it at all the shops for like eight yeah. bucks that I live here. Yeah, super eight bucks. There you go. Ten bucks. I, it's worth 20, to be honest. It's a great game. Metal aren't Ball, technically a ball bearing game. Uh, I could be interested. <laughs> You're bearing a ball, a football. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in that sense, technically. <laughs> all right, Bernardo, what's number five? Number five, you guys have talked about it, had to get it on here. Mall Madness. This <laughs> game is a blast. It is so funny. And, yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, Luke mentioned that his didn't have a girl and a guy component. Mine actually has a boy and a girl component. But yeah, Mine had first. boy and girl stand-ups. Stand okay. Yeah, no, we don't want yeah. those standees. Get that out of here. No, those are nasty. <laughs> Mine's no, sexy. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 other thing too to mention that we noticed well that you noticed matt when you saw um i believe luke's review was yours doesn't have um one of the pieces here that was important and i forget what it was i i wish i could remember something r says that yours doesn't say in yours and I can't remember whether it's like take someone to another store. I don't remember what it is, but th there's some differences. In oh, you're right. I can't remember what that was, but mine never. Oh, oh, oh that you get. Um, it's when you pass your credit card or no, no, no. When you go to the, is it go to the ATM? You don't get any money. Yeah. So um, yes. you ha if you've drawn, drawn money out before the bank remembers and you have to make a purchase before you can draw money out again. It will not let you draw out twice. No, that's not it. There's something else. There's something else. Uh, what about when you meet everybody at the bank and everybody gets money? Does it deny money? No, it does that too. I can't remember. I put it in your comments. But anyway, go ahead, Bernardo. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I can't remember. Yeah, no. No, no, you guys are good. You guys both talked about this. Luke already talked about how the game plays. It's great. Um, I guess if you want logic as to you have cash, why are you going to the ATM? Maybe you're going to the ATM to transfer from your savings to your checking account. Huh? But um, no, the game's great. Looks great on the table. And yeah, it's definitely not a game just for girls. Let the haters be haters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That, I, got, I looked it up now. It, yours charges $5 more sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what it yeah. was. I was like, what? Oh, that's I, so I cool. doesn't have that. Yeah, that, that's a real mean thing. So uh, especially if you go into a store with the clearance sign, because the speaker has final say. So you could go into a store that has the clearance sign. And you think, great, I'm getting a bargain. And it goes, pay five pounds more. And it means five pounds more than the highest price. So you could be thinking, right, I'm, I'm going to get myself a, a China set here for $50. No, you're paying $205. <laughs> yeah. No, mine does not. That was what mine didn't have. I was shocked by that. I was like, whoa, that is awful. That is awful. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's a fun, like I said, I had it the lowest out of the three of us at number 12, but to be honest, it, it could be a top 10 game any moment now. There's just so many games I love right now, but um, it is definitely a phenomenal game. Mm -hmm. All right, Luke, what is number five for you? Number five. Okay. Um, I sort of, I really struggled between this game and another game on where I should rank them because they're both, both made by the same designer. And I love both of them. And there's only two points between them with Mold Madness being the bridge. And that game is... Escape from Atlantis. Um, Matt, you covered this game earlier in the top 50, but this game's fantastic. Uh, it really is. So uh, this is the vintage one uh, from uh, Waddington's. Uh, the components are just absolutely beautiful. So beautiful. The, idea, 
is beautiful. He basically starts off on the island of Atlantis, and slowly but surely the island's sinking. You need to get your men uh, to the corner islands and to safety. And there's a number of ways you can do this. You can use the boats, and you can fill the boats with your own men and sail across, and you get three men safe. Brilliant, but you might have an opponent land on there, and they can choose to move that ship as well um, because they've got a man on it. Um, and there's plenty of ways in this game to throw people under the bus. So I've had it where players have had one man on a ship of two, two of my men and sail it straight towards a Kraken, and the sacrifice of killing one of theirs to have killed two of mine. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's... Um, so each of these uh, island tokens has a different um, sort of picture underneath it. And some of them will have monsters. Uh, some of them will have ships show up. Some will have monsters like the Kraken or the octopus, the sharks, dolphins. Um, you never quite know what you're going to get when you lift that tile up. Um, and the worst one is the whirlpool because the whirlpool takes everything out uh, in the circle around it. Um, and that can sort of kill men, really chip away at the island really quickly. Uh, and it gets frantic towards the end. Um, you know, it's it's a really fun game. You've got so many frets, but you've got the dolphins that can help you as well. Um, the reason why I ranked this one higher than Lost Valley of the Dinosaurs is the choices with this game are squarely in your hands. It's your choice what happens and where you're moving your pieces. And that's in Lost Dinosaurs, it's kind of look on what card you draw. You might end up getting flung in the swamp. You might get a pterodactyl. But with this, it's more in your it's more in your control. Yeah, you're picking those tiles, but you might get a boat. You might get a shark. You know, you never know. Um, I have a lot of fun with this one, and this one gets played so frequently. Um, and, you know, this game's still being made. It's still being uh, published. You can still get copies of it readily available, and there's a very good reason for it. It's a phenomenal game. It is, and that, that is the most beautiful copy. Yeah, I want that copy. Love, copy. Mm -hmm. love it. Very jealous over that one. All right, well, my number five, again, I'm going for cheap games here. If you buy this used, I think you can get it cheap. There's a new version out. Um, they still make the game. It's just a It's almost in a classic game. Uh, it's Can't Stop. Can't Stop, dice chucking game, where you're trying to uh, move up uh, these columns here by rolling. You, you start by picking two numbers, then a third number, and you've got to keep rolling, and you've got to make those numbers out of those three dice or four dice you're using it's fantastic now you can stop at any time and then you put one of your stop markers here and you save your spot but you can't stop you got to keep going and going until you bust and when you bust it's heartbreaking because you go all the way back to where you last stopped or all the way back to the beginning fantastic game fantastic game i love this game it's so fun uh, Eagle Griffin Games makes it still, and they made an expansion to it called Can't Stop Rolling Down the Highway. It works for even this old game, too. They made sure it was you know, compatible with any version you had. It doesn't cost that much, either. I, I picked it up for a couple of bucks, and it's interesting. If you if you love Can't Stop, you want to change the way the game's played a little bit, it's fun. It comes with these tokens that fit into the little squares here, and they make you do different things. And I, we enjoyed that one, but the regular version is just fine for you. This is just a phenomenal little dice game. This is another one that comes out around the holidays a lot. We play it a lot. It's just amazing. Absolutely one. It's always been my top 10. Now it's in my top five now. It just gets better and better each year. All right. So, uh, Bernardo, what is number four? Number four is one y'all have talked about already, Lost Valley of the Dinosaurs, um, <laughs> with a lot of the changed rules. This game is great. Uh, so uh, the the true um, position for this game, if you guys need it, know, is number four. But but <laughs> the lava um, change uh, of allowing um, it being three lava tiles, not even two. I initially thought two would be correct, um, but in the review, I think I even mentioned three. 
um, because after getting the card twice, it already filled up the volcano. Anything more than two fills onto the board because I think the lava is a fun component in kind of setting your opponent up for failure from going around the side of the area, which kind of forces them towards the other side, which has a swamp. Um, and uh, uh, my other rules to kind of allowing the swamp monster to move a lot faster makes the game speed up a little bit more and makes everything a lot more dangerous, which is the whole fun of the game. You got your pterodactyl. All the pieces in the game look just like toy components. It's like that toy plastic. Uh, it's not like miniature hard plastic minus the little uh, army men style figures. Um, but they, it's fantastic. Uh, the only component I wish was a little heavier was the shrine, which is made of cardboard, but that's perfectly fine. Yeah. I haven't really found that to be an inconvenience, um, but the game is great. Uh, the strategy on it is a lot of fun, and it's just a lot of screwing your opponents over, which, you know, we love in games. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've cow-scrolled that with the lava as well. We've, we've played games where it hasn't, it hasn't even hit the board, but, yeah, putting three tokens down rather than one, it gets it to the board and it becomes much more of a threat then. We've done that too. Oh, yeah. We've house ruled that too. It's great as well when you can trap a player in in one of the caves near the lava. Yeah. yeah. You can't get out. I love it. <laughs> it's great when you screw those players. All right. Uh, Luke, what is your number four? <clears throat> number four. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's 13 Dead and Drive. Wow. Yeah, yes. yeah. This game is just so good. Um, yeah, it's it's like the best of Cluedo and best of Mousetrap smashed together. Only you're not actually uh, solving the murder; you're committing them. This is a game of murder. Um, uh, it's got this fantastic, I'd say, three uh, D, but it's more like two point five D board. So uh, yeah, you've got this fantastic board. Um, with all these different traps, you can drop the chandelier on people, uh, throw them down the stairs, knock them into the fireplace. Um, and there's three different ways to win at this game. So uh, you can win by killing all the other players. You can win by um, having the having your picture in the uh, frame here when the detective arrives. Um, I can't remember the other one. Um, but there's definitely three ways to win. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so the the aim of the game is yeah to to win the inheritance. And at the start of the game, uh, you're given uh, which characters are yours. So I think there's twelve characters, and you're given cards to secretly tell you which one of those which ones of those twelve are your characters. But you get to choose to move any of the twelve. So you get to move your opponents around and put them in harm's way, and also move yours out of harm's way but you've got to be sly and subtle about this because it can be far too easy to let other players know ah okay so you've moved that one off the fireplace that's definitely yours so you need to be really sly and subtle about this game one house rule that we always play with is so the rules say when someone dies you let everybody else know that you had that character mm -hmm. and they're out of the game no 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 hold on to your card still and only at the very end of the game when someone's won do you let everybody know who had who because that way even if you're out of the game even if all of your characters are dead you can carry on playing you can still carry on shaping the game and really screwing over the other players you killed mine off i'm gonna make things far worse for you now this game is fantastic um it says uh two to four players there's no reason you couldn't play this game as a six-player game. I have done. It works brilliant. This is yeah. an absolute must-have game. 13 Dead and Drive, pick it up. Superb. Yeah, I agree. And, and honestly, that house rule you made, I suck at reading rule books, and I thought you'd never tell them what it is, and you still keep playing. So I was always doing that. I didn't know that was a house rule, but I guess I was doing it too this whole time. I just suck at reading. <laughs> oh man it feels uh, like the natural way to play it yeah i don't know why you would want to tell them because then they're gonna know oh it has to be this person and this is their character let's get them nah, it's wow not fun. it's a great wow. game yeah you gotta get it nice. i'll have to check it out all right my number four has already been mentioned previously by luke this is the first time i heard see luke is like i, I made him the poopy devil now he's like the siren 
from the old sailor ships that who sings that who and you know seduces you to jump overboard and go buy games like that. And this is the first time I ever heard the siren song of Luke and decided that I had to get this game. And I love it even more than Luke, which is very shocking because I hate soccer. Pro action football is unbelievable for every single reason that Luke mentioned. It is so much fun. I am not much for game for Flickham games. I don't have any of them. This is the only one I type have. But Luke is right. So satisfying, satisfying when you complete a pass to one of your other players, you feel like you did something cool. Or when you just when the ball is free and you you flick the guy right there so you can pick it up and move up across the board. Perfect lineup shot. You, you just feel like you won. When you hit the goal, you run around the entire room. We do go as long as you can hold it out. They have a little plastic trophy. I don't know why, because the game's over when someone wins, but you better hold up the trophy and dance around the room saying <laughs> goal, because that's what I do. I tackle my little nephews, when, you know, who I beat, you know, and I'm rolling around the floor with them, rolling, and they're like, get off me. And I'm like, go, because I got to jump on someone. I just love this game. This game plays differently depending on what surface you put it on. If you put it on a table, the ball's going to go a little quicker. If you put it on carpet, the ball moves a little bit slower. It's different game plays there, but we love that. Uh, both both items are just really nice. So the where you place this game makes a difference too. I have the newer version than Luke does. Mine has the plastic netting. Uh, I got that on purpose because Luke said that the the regular string netting can be a little tough to put on or aggravating. Nightmare. Yeah. So, so I said, well, you know what? Let me just go ahead and get the plastic click in one. This game, I, from what I remember, you can get it pretty cheap. It, it does come with expansions, meaning you can get different colored tops for the players there, you know, if you want to play different teams and whatnot. But, wow, I hate soccer. Just like Luke said, he's not much of a football fan. I don't like it either. I absolutely love this game. I love it. It's always been in my top five. Since it's been introduced, I think. I think it's always been, at least in the top ten at least. It is such a great game. Pro action football. Ooh. Yeah. Y'all made me yeah, want really, it. Honestly, man, I'm yeah. astounded that you've put it that high. Really am. I, I, I just re I am too, because I don't like soccer at all, but I absolutely think the game is brilliant. Yeah. All right. I recommend checking out to the videos because describing it did never excited me hearing y'all talk about it. But when I actually sat down and watched y'all's review, like I saw Luke's review where he pushes on the dude and the ball shoots, and I was like, that is amazing. I know it is. It, it, it <laughs> is. It's so amazing. So amazing. There's a cricket game that I'm after as well. Uh, same sort of thing. Uh, it's this one called Brian Lara Cricket. And, uh, yeah, it's same sort of thing. And there's like a little rod, and the, the little figure hits the cricket. But it's, it's so cool. <laughs> that's cool that's awesome all right bernardo we're in the top three right now what's number three number three. Oh man big one we got oh, tower of I the do wizard it. king you best believe this was in a top 10 number three baby this game is awesome so it's the only kind of area controlish game um that i enjoy that i've played thus far there's like risk, things like that. Not a fan of risk. This does use the same fighting dice mechanism as risk, um, but it's a lot more fun. The components look absolutely amazing. Uh, you have uh, different kind of characters who have different advantages uh, versus different characters, which it tells you um, what that advantage is in terms of dice on each player uh, or character board. So everything's well laid out. Your goal is to, at the end of the game, once the wizard reaches the top of the tower, Whoever's claimed the most and has the most pendants on castles wins. Um, now, how you get pendants, you go there and um, you basically claim them. Uh, you have to flip over the tile so you may be fighting someone. So you're fighting for that. So if you lose to it, they'll put a pendant there uh, instead of you. So you're trying to kind of take over people's areas. You have things such as a dragon. The coolest element of the game is being able to go inside of the tower, close the door, pull the lever, and it's has this like rotating mechanism 
um, that's mechanical, and it can change your character in there like magic. The wizard uses his magic. It's awesome. And it doesn't just shift it in order. It has, like, its own thing where it could be, like, one, three. It's so neat. So you can never expect what to get unless you're a math wizard and really sat there and counted what came what. Don't be that guy. Don't play with that guy. <laughs> but this game is awesome. I love it. Uh, the voice I did in the video was the voice, same voice I did when I played it. I can't do it right now since I'm a little bit under the weather. Um, but it is a fantastic game. I think everyone should own it. I hope Norm enjoyed it as much as I did in this review because um, it is awesome. I want that game. Same. I want that game. <laughs> that is so cool. Freaking breeze blocks. That is a huge box. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's big. I mean, we're talking not Mall Madness big. It's just thick. Mall Madness and those other ones are huge. Yeah. All right, Luke, what is number three? Number three is a game that Bernardo's already talked about, but I've had this game since I was five, and it's it's my mum's favorite board game, and it's one of my favorite board games. Ready? <laughs> yeah. This game is so much fun. So uh, the aim of the game is you each have a, uh, a fork and a spoon in the corner of the board. And attached to that is a piece of string, your spaghetti. And at the start of the game, you grab all the strings, lift them way up off of the board and go, ready, set spaghetti, and you drop them on the board. But the board has all these little holes in it, all these little peg holes. And what you do is you fill the holes with ingredient tokens. And what you do is you, you sort of put all these in there and all the strings, all the spaghetti is all tangled up around these pegs. So you roll a, a little dice, which has the different ingredients on, and you take turns to remove these tokens, trying to free your string up, but keep your opponents all tangled up. And certain pegs will have multiple colored strings on, so you might be forced to um, free up uh, your opponents. So, yeah... Um, there's only a certain number of uh, like meatball, onion, peppers, mushrooms, t uh, pegs in the board. So um, you might be forced to, there might be one onion one left, and you roll onion, you've got to take that one out. But the way we play this game is, if there's none of a particular ingredient left on the board, and you roll that ingredient, you get to put that peg back in the board and you get to choose where you're going to put it and you know for a fact you're going to do you're going to put it in somewhere that's going to totally screw over the other players um it, it's such a like we've played it this way for the longest time we've played it with that rule for the longest time it just feels like the natural way to play it it's it's super fun it's a game that's over in maybe five ten minutes and you will want to play this again and again and again I've held on to this for 30 years, and I, there's a reason why I've done that. This is a, such a fun game. Track it down, play it. You will not regret it. This is a great game. Agree. Wow. Great. Number three. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I am happy to hear all this. Okay. Well, I got a bombshell for my viewers who've been watching me for a while. Uh, it looks like, finally, the king has fallen. Um, because Stratomatic Baseball is number three. What? It is not number one. It's, Shock! Horror! It's always, no. it's always been number one on my regular board game list. Then I moved it to the Vintage because I said, well, I only play it solo, so I should put it to Vintage. And I never thought it would ever be. Now, this this is not the – this is – this is I don't play championship baseball, but I use the, uh, I use the field. <laughs> I have my own little version of it where uh, actually Luke is a character, Bernardo is a character. They're all on teams, too. All my friends are on teams. I play it throughout an entire season every year. Um, this past year, just like COVID, I had to shorten my season by about a third of what I usually do, only because now I have two girls. I played the season when they were little bitty, and, you know, they slept a lot, were sleeping and stuff, and I had paternity leave. I had plenty of time to play out my full season last year. And that was the last time I'm ever going to play out a full season again, it seems like. And it kind of just, I don't know, maybe that's why I wanted to make this number one. I, I, in fact, I kind of mentioned this to Luke a little bit. There were games I wanted to keep high, but I knew I, I would rather play the games. Just like, I feel like this game should be always number one. 
no, it didn't always have to be number one because I realized mm, this year I didn't get to play a full season, so I didn't get to enjoy it, enjoy it fully. It is still a fantastic game. I've played this since I was a kid. I still have some of the pieces. I still have the original game that my dad had that gave to, who gave to me. It's still in my closet. I won't throw it away even though the board is really wiped out from so much use. It's kind of worn out, but I'll keep it anyway because I just love this game. I absolutely think Stratomatic Baseball. Of course, baseball is one of my favorite sports, so I love playing that too, but I started making my own cards for it when my dad wouldn't buy me us the new version every year. And uh, I remember my dad just showed me how to make your own Stratomatic card. He said, here, there you go. Now you got the rookie of the year for – for this season or trade this player to this guy. And I was like, wait a minute. So I can make up anyone. He went, yeah, anyone. And that's when Matt Wilkins went to go play for the New York Mets that year. And after that I said, Hey, I'm going to do this for all my, all my friends. And I've been doing that ever since. So there, there it is still the curse of being number one on the vintage list sticks around, I guess, because I can never have back to back number ones when it comes to vintage wow. games for some reason. <laughs> I'm so, impressed. Now that that's done, that big bombshells, and now now it's now it's, every, it's all we're all out. Anything can happen now. What is number two, Bernardo? This feels like an easy one. Omega Virus. Yes. Yes. The guy finally got it to the table. Finally picked it up after being um, kind of stubborn. Honestly, I saw it and I was like, everyone has it. I don't really want to get it right now. Um, and it didn't, it, something about it just never really stood out to me. Looking at the art, I was like, oh, it's all right. It's not really that great. But seeing the art in person, it's amazing. Definitely can't be captured that well on camera. I even did as best as I could. And I still feel like there's something that you just don't get without seeing it up close in person. It's awesome. This game is ruthless. Uh, I suck at rule books, but if they drew it out for me, like a, a I love book that. that. I love that. that cracker girl so they made it really easy for me to understand it even though i still reached out to luke because i'll panic and i was like i don't know what this means help but it's a great game of you're trying to defeat a virus and there, there's just there's so much i'm going on and how you can screw over your opponents it's just so satisfying the pieces look great uh, it's and it i pointed out in my review that the main character on on the picture who's like the green um kind of spaceman looks just like master chief from halo and that is the funniest thing <laughs> but this game is awesome number two it is it's it's a great game honestly the best electronic game in my collection i agree all right luke what is number two for you i got a feeling that me and bernardo are going to switch two and one but uh i really really struggled with these last two games on where to position them um, but I'll say my reason for number one when I get to it. But number two is Tornado Rex. Um, this game is, every time I've brought this game out, everybody has just had an absolute blast with it. So um, I'll flip it over so you can see. It's it's a 3D board, uh, which is... It's so so cool. Like uh, it's got this airbrush quality to it. It's 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 yeah. fantastically sculpted and detailed. Like the work that's gone into making this is something else. So someone's had to sculpt and design all these paths um, for tornado tornado wrecks to fall down, and it's more or less perfect. I cannot think of a better route that they could have picked out because so the the game is you have to make your uh, explorers travel from base camp up to the summit sounds easy enough but it's it's complicated by tornado rex tornado rex is a spinning top you press the button and it'll come flying out and it'll send pieces flying left right and center it'll knock you over and uh, you can kind of negate uh, the damage you might have because certain spaces have caves but not entirely, you can still get hit and knocked off the board whilst in a cave. Obviously there's multiple paths where you can travel down so you might get lucky and you might go down the opposite path that you're stood on. Um, there's never a time setting Tornado Rex flying down that course when anyone isn't, you know, everyone's just so excited to happen. Even if it's knocking over your players you're still having fun with it. It's like, oh no, Tornado Rex is getting me. 
it's it's such a fun game. It is so fun. Um, my version has a spinner. I know there's versions which use a card system. I've not played the cards, but the spinner works really well. It's a nice random element to the game. Uh, so there's, there's lots of different uh, movements you can do. You can join the person at the top of the mountain. Uh, you can send someone back. Um, there's move 11 where you can switch. Uh, um, yeah, it's a shared movement between your two characters over uh, 11 spaces. Um, yeah, uh, uh, for a simple game, this one is one, whenever I bring it out, everyone's smiling uh, because it's such a unique mechanic. I have never seen a spinning top game used like this it yeah. is a phenomenal game it's super hard to get hold of um but if you can find one buy it it is freaking brilliant yeah i remember my, mine mine just placed outside the top 50 at number 51 um but i haven't gotten to play it as much lately uh that game i searched forever because every once in a while you could find a really good deal on it and i remember exactly where i was i was at someone else's wedding and it just popped up it was like oh and so underneath the pews, I was trying to order it real quick <laughs> during the wedding. <laughs> congratulations. Yay, congratulations. I was like, yes, yes. Uh, they're getting married. Good for them. <laughs> All right. So my number two is another big one. Remember I said reprints count. Uh, this is one of the my favorite. It was one of my ultimate favorite games as a kid. Th exactly 30 years to the date. I found this out from looking at my old journal. 30 years from the date, I was able to get the reprint of Fireball Island. Um, Fireball Island Restoration Games is masterpiece. Absolutely love it. Uh, there's a million things you can do to get points if you have all the expansions, and I do suggest you get every single expansion. My favorite one is the uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Bees, whatever. I absolutely <laughs> love that expansion, but uh, every expansion is worth it. There is so much to do and so many ways to score points. You really are kind of just out. Everyone is a mad scramble, to, especially if you have all the expansions. You're just going out over the island and doing anything. And to be honest, it's anyone's game. You don't even know who's going to win till the end because you don't know. You got a lot of points because you were collecting you know, the, the certain types of um, gems or whatever. Someone else may have just got the big, you know, the honey pots, the the snake and the gym, the Volcar's gym and, and hightailed it back to the airport. To, I mean, the uh, helicopter pad to get that lucky penny too. They just scored four big points and maybe that was it. Some guy was taking pictures everywhere, even on the big islands where pictures are worth 10 points, you know, or some person went to one island, just gathered up all the points on that, uh, the cut, the cutthroat island. I can't remember. Is it cut, cutthroat island? Oh, uh, Crimson Cutlass. Crimson Cutlass. And they were just grabbing up all those gems for either bonus moves or for two victory points at the end. There's so many ways. It's like you're, it's like an Easter egg hunt. You're running out into a field, gather, you're running for your lives, trying to get as many things. There's chaos going on. There's fireballs getting you. If you have the expansion, there's bees, there's snakes, <laughs> there's, there's boulders, there's a flying tiger, which I, visually, if I see this as a realistic game, what's a tiger doing, doing somersaults over the entire island? I don't know, but I love it. I absolutely love it. That little, it's, it's from Ants in the Pants, that mechanism. And I love that they did that and they brought that in the game. I have yet to hit anyone with that tiger, but we upped the bounty for if you get hit by the tiger, we upped the penalty for it. But, and we give you two shots, one for practice and one, one for good if you can't hit them the first time. Because we just absolutely love it. This is a phenomenal game. They've got to make another expansion for the other side of the island. And I don't care. After that, I'm going to beg Restoration Games for more because I really do think fireball island the, the, what they did they just took the original game which i love was very near and dear to my heart and they just elevated the gameplay on it absolutely great game super okay. game the spider springs yeah. is the best expansion pack which one spider springs spider springs is a lot of fun a lot I of fun that. have you have you played with the uh, the app yet yes yes i have I, I love the app i love the music from the app i love how you can do it to randomly sort out what where what uh tile what what, what are those things called the uh red so, yellow and blue treasures treasures yeah okay just yeah. treasures okay well I, I like how they randomize where that goes for you too i love the music you know the helicopter and everything it's a, oh, lot there's a new there's a new mode on the on the app uh so there's like a sound interactive mode 
and uh, you're listening out for certain sounds. So there's like a, a roar from a tiger, and if you hear that, uh, you end up losing a treasure. There's a hiss, and you have to stop moving immediately. Uh, and I think there's a cannon as well, and if you get hit by the cannon, uh, you I think you lose treasures to the Maw or something like no, that. Oh, I have to check that out. I, I didn't know that. I played this three days ago, and it was great fun. The only reason, I, I mean, I would have put Fireball Island at number one uh, on my list because I play it all the time. The only reason why I didn't is, I said before, I think the the, the new version is so different from the, the vintage version. I get it that. feels more like a new game. Um, I, felt, I felt like I would be cheating if I put it on this list. Uh, that's number one. Game. That's number one on mine in in my heart. The yeah. Okay. So, what is number one in your head on your list, then, Bernardo? You guys know, Tornado Rex has never been. <laughs> surprise! Surprise! I know. I think I've said this probably in so many videos that like my favorite vintage game is still Tornado Rex. I love this game. In fact, you're probably like Bernardo. How much do you love this game? I played this for 24 hours straight. <laughs> wow. Hours straight. There, there's a sad story attached to it. But <laughs> I played it for 24 hours straight. It was great. Um, this game, you have a top that comes down. And you swear that, like, each game he picks a color he doesn't like. We swear on everything that, like, <laughs> he targets one color. I'll never forget the first time I saw this thing pop off the corner of the map here and take someone out of the cave and continue to go down and hit all their pieces going down. I, it was the funniest thing. There's some laughing factor of watching someone's disappointment while their piece gets shot and not just like it gets knocked out of the way, shoots it to where you might have to duck for cover because the pieces will fly at your face. This game is awesome. Uh, it, it's very expensive. I think the cheapest I've ever seen it in, uh, nowadays is about $200. It's hard to sell it on that, but I mean, if you want a crazy experience and you have the budget for a game at that price, this is the one I would go for. It is so fun. It's wow. It, the fun is irreplaceable for me. Number one, that, no contest. That is a good game. <laughs> All right. So now we are down to Luke for his number one. Luke, what is it? I had to really think hard about this. Um, number one is Dirty Minds. No, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> number, one, <laughs> number one is, of course, the Omega Virus. That's a great game. Um, so my thinking when I went into this was, what if I was trying to introduce someone to vintage gaming, which game would I pick? Uh, to showcase everything what I love about vintage games. And this was the only one I could really think of. Like, first off, artwork is superb, like, throughout. I mean, the box art is, is a freaking work of art itself. But, mm -hmm. I mean, the actual components on the inside are beautiful. So you've got this fantastic, uh, almost like circuit board style um, game board. Next, you've got this talking unit in the middle, uh, which um, so that the end of the game is to find the virus, pick up the three uh, weapons that you need to defeat the virus, find the room where it's in, and defeat it. Um, and everybody's trying to do this, but every it's almost it's almost like a collaborative game at the start. But once everyone's got their weapons, and once everyone knows where the virus is. It's every man for themselves. It changes on a dime. It's so quick. Uh, but the virus can attack you and will attack you. So you might find um, a probe, but the virus might destroy the probe in a few turns time and you're back down to not using it. It might zap weapons that you've picked up and you might have to find them all over again as the game goes on. Well, the other thing as well is this game has uh, numerous difficulty modes, which is basically... Uh, shorter time to find the virus so the most you can get is 35 minutes i think the lowest you can get is with a secret hidden mode which is 10 minutes to find this sucker and it is tense it is really tense the cool thing as well is these flaps here uh, after a certain time the virus will sh shut down certain sectors 
and you actually fold this portion of the board in, and that's it. You can't go in there anymore, which limits which limits how, uh, you, you sort of got right okay so it can't be in that one it can't be in that one it has to be around here somewhere and you're frantically running around trying to find this virus all the while this bastard virus is taunting you uh, <laughs> yeah the cool thing as well is this, this speaking unit has two voices it's got the voice of the battle sock computer which is this very robotic voice help me and you've got this <laughs> that was a good that's a great impression virus yeah, trying, trying, cool. you, it's like help me help me it's like constantly talking i have never known a game to piss you off as much as this thing does by taunting you but it's part of its charm um it is a phenomenal game when you bring this thing out and set it up people go whoa what the hell is this it's like yeah. This is the Omega virus, and you're in for the game of your life. This game again, not easy to find, not you know, find complete, not easy to find working, and it's certainly not cheap. But yeah, if you've got deep pockets, definitely get this one. It yeah. is number one. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. we all had that on our top ten. I, I obviously oh, I, had to. Amazing game. Had to. I, the, my commercial. I say, can, can you just shut up? Because that's exactly how I felt. Listening to that <laughs> robot, it is so annoying. Oh man, so, yeah. I'm so surprised that game's not been remade. They it have means a remake. I don't know if I don't know what they're doing. Apparently, they're, they're there was on their website at one point. Restorations, I don't know what's happening. I'd love to see it. Love to see it too. Well, maybe after they see this video, they'll make it happen. <laughs> I want it to light up, I want smoke to come out of it. I have <laughs> <laughs> Shoot lasers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well, my number one for this year has been a game that's been in my collection for a while. And finally, I'm going to pick an expensive one. This game is about four or $500 now. It is Star Wars The Queen's Gambit. Um, this is the movie, uh, basically the last 30 minutes of the movie, all in one box. Uh, Avalon Hill helped Hasbro design it. And they did an amazing job with it. This is a 3D, I mean, three boards all in one where you're playing different, uh, you're in the battlefield. You're, um, let me see, this is the battlefield here. This is the Theed Palace where you're, you're, you're uh, I was going to say Princess Leia, Padme trying to fight their way through the droid cars to get up to the top of the control tower to win. However, uh, Darth Maul, Obi-Wan, and Anakin are fighting here. And then further back here, Anakin is flying his little ship uh, through all the uh, fighters to get to get destroy the main droid ship. You've got a stack of cards. You can only play three, and you can play them for any one of these four or five areas. And it is just an epic game. I know they reprinted this as Star Wars Risk for Return of the Jedi. It's like a, it's like this game but a lighter version. Honestly, this is, I got this one back when it was only $200. And even back then I was like, whoo, $200. <laughs> but uh, now, now it's climbed up to the four or $500 range just because more and more people hear about it. And it is an epic game. Every time I play, it is down to the wire between the two of us. Usually always the good guys are going to win. I don't see, I saw once where the bad guys won, but that's because he used my strategy and he played against a guy who had no idea what he was doing. Um, but it doesn't matter when I tell people that I say, well, who do you want to be? When I introduced someone to this game, I said, and I'll be honest, the good guys win all the time. The bad guys hardly win. Who do you want to be? And they went the bad guy because they, they want to kill Gungans. They want to kill Gungans. They want to be Darth Maul. I was like, okay. And I, I try to tell them their best strategy and, and one person almost won. She came pretty darn close because she had a good strategy. She figured it out at the end, but it is just a phenomenal game. I used to play, um, uh, uh, like board game nights with six people over at my house. Four people would come at the main table, play a four-player game, and then I had a little two-player table where we'd rotate in and out playing the two-player game. No one wanted to be on the two-player table, ever. They thought that was just, they, they were missing out all the fun happening on the main island. However, if I had set up this game, there was a fight to get to the two-player uh, table and when we were playing our game, I saw everyone not paying attention, kind of looking over. Who's winning? What what happened? <laughs> What's going on? I was like, guys, come on, we're playing our own game. 
what make sure I got next game. Hey, so if 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 they they're done, can I can I can they, he just switch out and play the rest of this game with me? I mean, seriously, this is just such a great game. Absolute love it. My 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 new for 2020 number one. Hey, you know what? This was a lot of fun. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Bernardo, for coming in and uh, sharing your top 50 as well. I really appreciate it. It's been a blast. And yeah, uh, guys, if you do want to check out uh, uh, Down from the Attic and Tabletop Island, both of these channels uh, put out excellent content. These guys are whizzes with e editing and making entertaining and intellectual and educational uh, review. So definitely, definitely check them both out. They're some of my favorite channels. That's why I'm happy to have them on here when I talk about board games. I know Luke has, has an upcoming ball bearing week again. Is that true? Um, I've got plans for it, but uh, the next I've got, I've got a big thing happening for Halloween and a special week after that. I don't want to mention just yet. I want to let it be a surprise. Okay, we'll be quiet on that one then. And then Bernardo is going to be doing tons of reviews. No, seriously, folks, this time he is going to be doing tons of reviews on Halloween themed games, something you've been building up for quite some time. Yes, video every day. Uh, it won't be a review every day. It can be a mixture of different things, but it'll be something every day for that whole month. All right. Well, there you have it. So once again, folks, thanks for joining me on my top 100 vintage games of all time. We'll see.